the Catholic Church is evil is the title of this video, and it will last approximately 30 minutes, I presume, maybe a touch less. Um, but I need to give a personal disclosure before we get into it. Um, you know, due to the nature of this video, I, I do feel obligated to inform those of you where I'm coming from on this issue. A bit of my background and some of my experience with the Catholic Church. I will say that when I was young, I did go to and did attend a Catholic school. And this impacted me in very negative and numerous ways, looking back in retrospect. If I was to continue down this path I started on, I could have easily ended up as a Jesuit. It's not even a question. However, questions were raised about the Catholic Church ultimately and that saved me uh, from them what's my goal in this video what's the goal of this video it is meant to warn you about almost all the dangers i discovered through my extensive experience as a catholic i don't hate the average guy stuck in the catholic church i would want to see you guys leave it as the bible would suggest Revelation 18.4 reads, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Much of the traditions enforced by the Catholics cannot be found in the Bible. Everywhere from the pointed hats worn by the priests to the idols that Catholics are asked to kneel and pray before. I have news for you. Those pointed hats come from pagan religions of old, and those images or statues which you are asked to pray to aren't saints. For those of you that might have memorized the Ten Commandments, this next verse will ring a bell. Exodus 24 reads, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. This clearly contradicts what the church does. It is typically brushed aside. I wish I could remember how this was typically explained away in my childhood. You see, I was always genuinely searching for the truth, as I'm sure many of you guys do likewise. This is really why I was able to be saved from them. The Lord says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If you do not seek the truth, you will not find it. But additionally, one more component is necessary, but it will be supplied if you seek the truth. Someone must share the good news with you. What is the good news, you say? Well, John 3.16 reads, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What does this mean? This promise from God states that if you believe in Jesus, you will be saved from hell. Now, what does that mean exactly to a Catholic that would agree that Jesus Christ is the living God? I know I would have agreed with this statement in John 3.16 when I was a Catholic. What is meant is that you must trust in his actions of dying for your sins to get you saved and nothing else. I repeat, nothing else. This means having to confess your sins to a priest every week in order to be saved from hell is a lie. It is such a terrible lie, I feel that many die never knowing how terribly they have been tricked. I am making a huge claim here, but this has to be said. I don't want to see anyone to be punished for their ignorance of this. You are kept ignorant by the church as reading the Bible is not very encouraged, especially the King James Bible, which is the best Bible available today in the English language. The excuse was that the language used was too archaic to be understood, so I never really read the King James around Catholics. The main point I want to make is that no priest can intermediate for you on behalf of your sins other than Jesus Christ. Paul describes that we must live a perfect life. 
or you need to place all your faith in what Jesus Christ has done for us. No man can live a perfect life, so the first option is impossible. We as Christians look back in time to what Jesus has done for us, but the Old Testament men, such as Abraham, had to look forward to the coming of the Messiah, which is Christ. All the Jews of the Old Testament were saved through their belief in the Anointed One, Jesus Christ. Romans 4.13 reads, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. We are saved by faith, and if anyone debates that, they are wrong and they are not saved. The component one requires when searching for Christ is the component I am trying to serve right now. Romans 10, 8 to 18 reads, But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things! But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Lastly, I want to share the story of the Ethiopian eunuch as well, lastly found in Acts 8 verses 26 to 39. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet then the spirit said unto Philip go near and join thyself to this chariot and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said understandest thou what thou readest and he said how can I except some man should guide me and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip, and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself, or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. What a wonderful story. This shows that God will make it possible for you to be saved even if no Christians live in your area. God can send someone to find you. 
This is additionally support for why it is important to go out into the world and share the good news with people. The good news is that it is very easy to be saved by putting your faith into Jesus Christ. And the fact that your actions beyond believing has nothing to do with your salvation. If you believe in what I have said here, you are saved. Therefore, come out of her. Remember, you need no one else but Jesus Christ to be saved. Cling to the King James Bible as it is the Word of God. Read it cover to cover because 2 Timothy 3.16 to 17 reads, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Moving back to focus right in on the Catholic Church, let me make it known why the Catholic Church is so evil beyond them leading people to hell with the false doctrine of a works-based salvation. Of course, further evidence should not be required, but I will give it to make their wickedness known. Ephesians 5.13 reads, But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Additionally, the Bible says in John 8.32, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Let's begin. I will first raise question against why there are so many pedophile priests if the Catholic Church is so holy. Why does the Pope have fellowship with all the religions of the world if he is Christian? This may go to show that when the Pope worships alongside other religious leaders, that they are worshiping the same deity. I will tell you now that the deity cannot be Christ. It is idolatry of the highest order. And honestly, it is extreme, extreme, just pure Satanism. Why is worshiping idols so encouraged in the Catholic Church? Well, the Bible says this about idols in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So, when the Catholic Church has you pray to idols, they are not just inanimate objects, but demons. The Church promotes demon worship. Additionally, why is Mary proclaimed to be the Mother of God, elevated to the position that she is by the Church? Could it be that it descends from pagan goddess worship? I will tell you that it most certainly does. Of course, Mary was important, but she is not the most mentioned Mary in the Bible. She is barely mentioned across all four Gospels. I believe it was approximately 18 times. Others, such as Moses, were mentioned 783 times. Samson is mentioned 38 times. She is not extremely central in real Christianity. The Catholic Church is a wolf in sheep's clothing that tries to sell you that they are Christian, when they are at the center of evil in this world, the Bible reads when Jesus is preaching in Luke 11, uh, verses 27 to 28, And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather... Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Let us do what Jesus Christ directed and do not put Mary with the title of goddess. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. If you pray the rosary, you need to stop. No more Hail Mary prayers as directed by the church. Remember, come out of her. Moving on. Holy water and the pointy hats worn used in the Catholic Church are the spitting image of the same apparel used in Diagonism. It's a pagan religion. No one should be expected to know this or where the stuff comes from. But you will know if you read the Bible that no direction is given to wear what they are wearing. The term holy water can be found in the Bible, but it is not used in the type of context which the church uses it in. 
The term holy water can be found in only a single verse, Numbers chapter 5, verse 17, which reads, And the priest shall take holy water in earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. To provide more context, I will continue to read verse 18, which says, And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord, and uncover the woman's head, and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. So what does this holy water do? It is used to curse people. Interesting though, instead of it being a blessing, perhaps the Catholics are making an attempt to curse everyone who attend the Mass. Would this be the actions of a real Christian organization? Of course not. Back to the Rosary, the Bible makes mention of this type of pagan ritual. Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 reads, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they that think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. The correct way is noted in the previous verse by Jesus saying, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. The Pope is not infallible. The position of Pope is nowhere to be found in the Bible. The verse that is pointed to, which tries to legitimize giving the Pope the authority of Christ, is that which Jesus discusses the keys of heaven and hell with Peter. What is not realized is that if you go back to read this for yourself, you will find that the rock which Jesus spoke of building his church upon was not necessarily Peter, but the rock is Christ, or at least the word of God, which is the Bible. Another parable is given uh, comparing he who builds his house upon the rock and the man who builds his house upon the sand, if you have heard that parable. This same rock is Jesus Christ. Be careful the many Bible versions pushed by the Catholics like the NIV. The NIV has over a thousand alterations from the original Textus Receptus text uh, through the use of old trash called the Dead Sea Scrolls. Again, read the King James. I have a video on the subject, but for the sake of time, I will simply tell you that the King James is the text you ought to read. Know that purgatory is not biblical. You cannot buy your way to heaven. Do not forget the dark history of the Catholic Church, which, uh, for example, would be the Spanish Inquisition run by the Jesuits. The Jesuits still work directly under the Pope till this day with their head, the Black Pope. Many Christians are not aware of the Black Pope, and therefore they are completely unaware about the evils the Jesuits commit and have committed for roughly the past 500 years. Of course, Satanism goes back further than that. I will save a further discussion of them for a later video. The Catholic Church cannot decipher between the symbolic and the literal. The bread and wine which is consumed at each Mass is not Christ's literal body and blood, as the Catholic Church would say. Christ was saying that he is the bread of life. It is the same story with the woman at the well which desired to drink from the well which she would never thirst again from. Christ is the living water. He is salvation. There is no literal fountain of youth. There is no holy grail which will give you eternal life. Only through Christ can you be saved. That is the meaning. That is the truth you must accept. Free yourselves from the Catholic Church. I hope this helped. God bless all that seek after the truth.